The thymus gland is a specialized butterfly-shaped organ of the human immune system. It's located in the center of the chest behind the breastbone. It is also one of the most important glands in the body because it helps to regulate the immune system. The primary function of the thymus gland is to produce and process lymphocytes or T cells. Lymphocytes are white blood cells that protect the body by producing antibodies that stop the invasion of foreign agents, bacteria, and viruses. They also prevent the growth of abnormal cells like cancer. Hi, my name is Mary Bourne. I'm a traditional naturopath, and I love sharing natural remedies with people. Natural remedies have been around for centuries, even thousands of years, because they work. Thank you for joining me today. I congratulate you on looking into healthier ways to support your body and keep it healthy. I suppose that you, I hope that you will share this video with other people so that they too can learn about natural methods that support health. If you subscribe and click on the little bell, you will be notified each time I upload a video, and that's about once a week. I share information on health and on uh, tips on gardening, um, things that you can do to support health by making some remedies, uh, lots of fun stuff. So today we're gonna talk about the healthy thymus and the facts on how the thymus works to protect you from viruses such as the coronavirus. It is one of the most important glands in the body because of this regulating the immune system. I think of it as the general or the conductor of a symphony. The thymus is a really important gland. Let's see if we can get the slide to move here. There we go. So why is it important for people to know about how the thymus works? Well, first of all, people are not being exposed to how the immune system works and with knowledge comes power. Secondly, there is some scientific evidence that shows it's quite recent that T cells are being researched as a defense against coronavirus like COVID. And I will put these links in the description below so that you don't have to quickly try and copy it all down. But you can do a screenshot, however, it won't give you that link. The virus responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic, SARS-CoV-2, we hear it called so many things, is part of a family, a large family of coronaviruses. Coronaviruses usually cause mild to moderate upper respiratory tract illnesses like the common cold. However, SARS-CoV-2 can cause serious illness and even death. And we know that this happens in the immune compromised and the elderly. We're gonna talk about that even further. So why people COVID-19 19 system or symptoms seem to be so varying. Some people will get it. They don't even know they got it. Some people will die of it. Well, actually die with it. Because most of the time you die of complications due to diabetes or heart disease. You don't die of COVID. You die with it. So According to this article, uh, why people's COVID-19 symptoms vary so greatly isn't fully understood. Well, I think, I think you need to put a pin on that because I think that we do know and we will examine that a little further. So your body's 
disease defense system, the immune system, makes B and T cells when exposed to pathogens like viruses and bacteria. But what have we been told? Oh, stay away, mask up, don't get in crowds six feet away, don't challenge your immune system with this virus. Well, that may be true if you're elderly and immune compromised, if you're sick, but healthy people should be exposed to it so that their immune system can identify and say, hey, I've dealt with coronavirus before, and this is what I've done. And depending on how active your immune system is, it should be no big deal. And we're going to discuss why children don't get COVID. The incidence of children getting COVID or passing COVID on to others is minuscule. So T cells have a variety of functions, including killing infected cells and activating or recruiting other immune cells. So it further states, we have now proven that in some people, pre-existing T cell memory against common cold coronavirus can cross-recognize SARS-CoV-2 down to the exact molecular structures. And this article was written by Weisskopf and she further puts down, this could help explain why some people show milder symptoms of disease while others get severely sick. So how does your immune system handle a cold or flu? Are you down and out or do you have the sniffles and then next day nothing? Uh, do you get the flu? You're very sick, done with it in 24 hours. That's going to be a key indicator as to how your body would be able to handle this COVID. So how would it help to boost your immune system? I think we need to look into that. And let's talk a minute about a vaccine because a vaccine challenges the immune system. It in no way boosts the immune system. Vitamin C boosts the immune system. We will talk about some really good supports for the thymus gland. So let's go, what does a healthy thymus look like? Well, let's look at the key players here. Healthy tonsils, not swollen, not challenged with allergies, or even removed. We know that some people, uh, when they were children, the tonsils were swollen and therefore they were yanked because they kept getting sick. Why weren't we told that that's an indicator we need to boost the immune system, not yank them out? How about the lymph nodes? If you have congested lymphatic lymph and you have swollen nodes, you need to do something about it. You need to look into uh, walking and drinking more water and getting some good exercise. And if they've been removed, then you know you have to support your immune system and make it healthier. And what about the spleen? Many people have uh, had accidents and their spleen's been damaged and they've had to surgically remove it. What if it's unhealthy? What about bone marrow? Bone marrow depends on a healthy diet full of vegetables, fruits, uh, vitamins like D and K, K and collagen like bone broth. I recommend people, every person should be making bone broth. It's so easy, especially if you have like an Instant Pot or something like that. It takes virtually little time on your part. 
and yet you have something healthy that you can either drink like it is or add to to omelets or uh, anytime you want to use a broth you can use the bone broth if you can't take the time to do bone broth then at least get a good collagen supplement and i will link in the description below some what i feel is one of the best sources of healthy collagen and you can get it at discount so supports for the thymus and better immune health we've been hearing some information about zinc and how important it is well here's some tips nearly 30 percent of the elderly population is considered to be zinc deficient so since zinc homeostasis is known to be an important it be important in immunological reactions such as the inflammatory response and the oxidative stress that's aging multiple chronic diseases observed in the elderly are probably related to zinc deficiency so how hard is that to get a chewable zinc and maybe take it two or three times a week or if you feel like you don't get over colds very quickly or that you're dealing with allergies maybe taking a zinc lozenge every single day would be very helpful for you zinc supplementation results in increased numbers of t that's the thymus and it also means to target the thymus targets cells and the nk which are the natural killer cells this fights cancer and elevated production of interleukin 2 and s interleukin 2r now if you want to do some further research click on those and google it it's very interesting furthermore lymphocyte response to phytohemagglutin uh, stimulation now anytime you see the hema in there we're talking about blood as well as natural killer cell activity improves significantly compared to the placebo group so there is a, a lot of studies on zinc and how helpful it is so we mentioned collagen before and if you don't make bone broth you can purchase it there's lots of collagen out there you can mix it it has no taste and it can be mixed with your favorite beverage or in smoothies and you can get it at discount when you click on the link in the description below vitamin d and k we need healthy doses of sunshine and what have we been told in the early months we had to stay out of the thing you know face up uh, face mask up and all this stuff we need to be outdoors and running around and getting our children out there running around getting some good sunshine but when it's cloudy and we can't it's important to supplement most of my clients take at least 2000 iu every single day in the morning of vitamin d and the studies show that you want to take between a thousand to four thousand iu or 25 to 100 milligrams daily and especially when our immune system system is being challenged we want to be on that high end in fact it might even behoove you to take 100 milligram twice a day so take it in the morning and take it at lunch and then um, also vitamin k so a person weighing 165 pounds should be taking 75 micrograms now that's way less than milligrams so you need to look sure look at the label and make sure it says micrograms on vitamin k and it's the best form is in oil form and i like mine with krill oil it um, is a really good way to get it into the body so finally make sure you have a well-functioning lymphatic system and look for that um, and for that we need lots of water and the formula for that is uh, you take your body weight you divide it in half 
And that's how many ounces of water you want to drink on a daily basis. Water and movement is what helps to get the lymphatic system going. There is no pump like there is for the heart, uh, for the blood, the heart is to the blood. You need to move, be active uh, to get the lymphatic system functioning well. So daily walks or treadmills. Uh, and then you can look up things like dry skin brushing. It's an excellent way to move lymph on a daily basis and massage and thymus thumping. So those are things that you can do further research on to assist your uh, immune system to work more efficiently, get it going. So in conclusion, learning how the immune system works and how we can boost it through understanding and scientific evidence is utmost in fighting pathogens. Don't wait for the vaccine. Remember, the vaccine is not immune supportive, it's immune challenging. And if you already have a poor functioning immune system, it can, you can get some really severe reactions from vaccines due to the ability of your immune system to handle that. So remember the, the, where the thymus is and look at the relationship, how close it is to the lungs and the heart. And maybe there should be some more research done on how your body by boosting the immune system, it can protect the lungs and heart, uh, especially if you're supporting more thymus energy. So, Please like and share these videos, comment with things that have worked for you or questions that you need answers for, and I will be sure to get back with you. Look for other videos on gardening tips or health topics on my YouTube channel, and keep focusing on gratitude, be grateful for people, and gifts of nature, the flowers, and all the joy around you. Uh, this is Dr. Mary for the health of it from good health perspectives. And until next time, this is Dr. Mary for the health of it.